G'day folks, Chris Franklin here with another Aussie Legends Event 5-Minute Podcast. My guest today has ridden a Melbourne Cup winner. Back in 92, he rode Sub-Zero, first across the post in the world's greatest race, the Melbourne Cup. Uh, he's known affectionately, he's got the same nickname as the MCG. He's known as the G. Please welcome to the 5-Minute Podcast, Mr. Greg Hall. Thank you, Christopher. Here's the G. I don't know if I'm big as the G, but... Uh... We'll stick. We'll, we'll run with it anyway. But uh, great to be on Aussie Legends events, mate. The first time for me, so uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's a good little chat we have here. Just try and promote the company, promote the people that we can get out there to to sporting clubs for sporting events. Um, you've worked with Aussie Legends events before. You came down for the Evandale luncheon, I believe, one time. Yes, correct, Chris. Yeah, one of my uh, stamping grounds, Tassie. <laughs> It's a good place to be. I live down here, as most people know, but we can get uh, performers and speakers to you all across the country, any sporting club anywhere in Australia. Mate, we'll get back onto you and forget about ALE for a little while. Uh, 92, riding Sub-Zero, actually winning the Melbourne Cup. Well, what's that feeling like? Yeah, it's a very common question, Chris. Um, it's one that's unexplainable. You know, Glenn Boss and I asked Roy Higgins as a kid and you can't explain it, but um, to have a ride in it's one thing. To uh, win, it's a complete different thing. And, um, I mean, it's every jockey's dream, but um, you can dream and wake up in the morning and you might dream of Alec McPherson, but she's not next to you. But um, <laughs> we wait, the dreams aren't true. But uh, the dream about it is one thing. But um, to win it, yeah, it was, um, like I said, mate, it's every jockey's dream, but it's unexplainable. Um, I can assure you that when I was two lengths in front with 200 metres to go, it was a long, long way, that winning post. I was hoping the winning post come before me, um, coming towards me, better than me going towards it. But, um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a race that you, it's the only race in the world that you can go into. And if you think you, you've got it and you think you can win it, well, you're kidding yourself because um, it's the hardest race to walk right in and the hardest one to win. But... Um, very privileged, mate, and happy that Sub Zero is still alive. Sadly, his, um, his master passed away a couple of weeks ago, as we know, Graham, but um, he's still alive and well. He might outdo us all, Chris. He's 33 <laughs> on August. So, so um, apart from that cup win on Sub Zero, uh, did you and Sub Zero team up a lot? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We spent a lot of time together um, on and off the track. Um, I mean, what he'd done on the track was uh, in the history books, but uh, what he'd done off the track was uh, quite incredible. Um, you know, uh, nursing homes and uh, hospitals and disabled kids and schools. And, yeah, I spent a lot of time. Even when, I, even when he retired and he was a clerk of the course, I'd write, I'd write a winner and um, he'd lead me back in and I'd give him a kiss and a cuddle. And um, then he turned into... Uh, once he retired from the park of the course, he, um, of course, done a lot of events and um, he's a one-off horse. He goes anywhere. He goes in lifts, in stairs, RSL, clubs, pubs, nursing homes, um, aged care, hospital schools. He walks in and um, he's been a great ambassador, you know, um, in the equine industry. So he's basically been doing the speaker circuit for the horses after he's retired. He it was, it was funny as you say that he was. Um, I said you more. I used to say to him. I said you become more. I've done a lot of events with him and catch up with him all the time. And um, wasn't long ago where he was in trouble. I went down and seen him at uh, Bendigo Hospital. But uh, I said to him, I said you become more famous than me. <laughs> he's uh, he's he's, uh, he's got a following that is quite extraordinary on social media, which is great because uh, kids love him. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, apart from that, we're not in, in the Melbourne Cup. You, you've also uh, won a Cox Plate. You've won two Golden Slippers. Uh, what were the rides there? But... Yeah, I won a Cox Plate on uh, Superimposed, and then ten days later, I, I won on Sub Zero the Melbourne Cup. But that was a great year, and um, uh, two Golden Slippers, Dan Zero, which are, was ironically owned by the same four blokes that owned Sub Zero, and. Um, Merlin was for Kerry Packer and Lloyd Williams, and um, he had my time in the sun, mate, for um, quite a while. Got a bit sunburnt. I was up there for ten or fifteen years, and um, but it doesn't come without a price, Christopher. Um, 
you know, done a seven-year apprenticeship for $5 a week and half a Sunday afternoon off every second weekend. It's different now, but, um, you know, and like I said, it don't come without a price, mate. It's, uh, we seen that awful accident on the weekend and thank God the young man's okay. But, um, you know, I broke my back, I broke my neck, 12 ribs, um, punctured lung, unconscious five times and, uh, yeah, so it, doesn't, it takes hard work to win a Melbourne Cup and, um, yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a dangerous sport as we know and, uh, but I, uh, I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah, yeah. You're saying about the falls. I, I recently watched uh, the movie Ride Like a Girl about Michelle Payne and, um, yeah, I, I was unaware of the, the, her career before that and all the falls she'd had as well. Yeah, it's the unknown for the public, uh, Chris. You know, like I said, um, it's all well and good looking at Greg and guest speaking, whether he's in Hobart or wherever. But, um, you know, punctured lung, 12 ribs and collarbone, wrists. And, yeah, it's a very dangerous... Well, actually, the statistics are it's the most... Fella- it's the most fatalities of any sport in the world. So, um, yeah, it's a really dangerous sport, mate. And that's only race day with our track work, you know. Um, they're 500 kilos and they're going 60, 70 k's an hour. And we weigh an average 50 plus kilos. And so you're dealing with an animal, not with a uh, F1 or a uh, motor, motorbike or whatever, but where you can handle yourself, you know. But, um, yeah, they're a unique sportsman. Jockeys, they're, they're a one of, you know, it's uh, not a thing you can teach someone. Um, it's a, a gift, and the pains have got that big. I mean, it's a very genetic, the pains, a bit like the halls, you know. <laughs> yeah, mate, I, I'm not a big punter myself, but I've got a lot of friends who are, and, and uh, a lot of them will follow the jockey as opposed to the horse. Uh, like Greg Hall had, had come up on the winner's circle most sad day, so, you know, they'd, they'd see you racing at a meet and they'd back you instead of the horse. And, is it more the horse, more the jockey, 50-50? What, what, what's the go there? Oh, look, the reality is, you know, Frankie Dettori or Hugh Bowman or Greg Hall or Damien Oliver or Roy Higgins or go back to the great Scobie Breezley and George Moore, if you put them on a horse that's never won a race, they're not going to turn it round, no. I mean, the race horse is no different than the athlete, you know. I mean, um, whoever's races against Carl Williams or... Sam Bold or whatever, we your odds are you aren't going to beat them. But um, if the, uh, the difference is between a champion jockey and a good jockey and average jockey, um, my belief is um, you know, a you need the horse, and then it comes down to the jockey because good um, different jockeys can get beat on good horses. But if you've uh, great jockeys like Hugh Bowman and Damon Oliver and Craig Williams, uh, you put them on the right horse and um, nine times out of ten, they'll get it right, you know. But they can't make slow horses go quick, no. Neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you've ridden for some interesting uh, owners as well. Uh, Lloyd Williams, Sheikh Mohammed um, and, and the late Kerry Packer. I remember when I met you down here in Tassie when you were doing the event for us, uh, you had a very interesting story about Kerry Packer the time you met him. Do you, do you want to share that with us? Yeah, it was an interesting character. Um, I'll, I'll shorten it up, Chris. Um, I end up um, hadn't met the man before, and I had to ride a horse for him called Major Drive, and um, he won the chairman's handicap, and that was fantastic. And then um, he was in the Sydney Cup ten days later. In those days, it was, and um, I said he's got a good chance in it, and. Uh, he said, do you think so, son? He used to call me boy or son. He, anyway, uh, when I was at the race, I said to Lloyd, I said, uh, where's Mr. Packman? He said, oh, he's out doing his stuff, Greg. He said, he, if he wins, he said, you know how he looked after the, after the chairman's handicap. He said, um, he said, you'll end up look well looked after. And he said, just have a safe journey. Though I like the odd couple. Lloyd was very conservative. Kerry was very loud. And... and um, Anyway, uh, we won and uh, went back to his place that night thinking I was going to end up with a big chocolate farm and um, he was undoing the cup and he, he said, fantastic ride, son, and I'm thinking, oh, how good's this, you know? And uh, <laughs> ka-chink, ka-chink, and uh, he put the cup down. He said, even though I had seven million on the second horse, you little bugger, 
So uh, <laughs> I, end up, I end up where they had a must stick and not a licorice stick. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of the great stories of racing, yeah. <laughs> they were fantastic <laughs> people to ride for, you know. But you can't fathom that having seven million or something, yeah. <laughs> I just can't well, he, he owned the horse and he backed the second horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> that's for the, that's racing. <laughs> Mate, you've passed on the baton. Your, your son Nicholas uh, is a jockey. Uh, he's ridden in two Melbourne Cups himself in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. He did, and uh, he won two Caulfield Cup with which his dad didn't. Well, he used to always get me up um, guest speak, and they say, Greg. You're the only jogger that win the Perth, Adelaide, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane Cup. I said, that's right. They said, you never won a Corville Cup. And I said, I wasn't interested in suburbs. I was more <laughs> of a state man. But Nicholas won two Corville Cups, so he got that out of the way for me. And uh, he's retired now, and um, which is sad, actually, because uh, talk about the pains. Um, for 100 years, Halls of Road and Nicholas had the baton, passed the baton on to him when I retired. And um, for one year, no halls, never not rode for a hundred years. And uh, anyway, it's all stopped now. Nicky stopped it all. He hasn't had any kids to carry on, but uh, he's happy and um, doing nice. Well. And you'll always have that over him. He, you've won the Melbourne Cup, he hasn't. No, but he won two Corville Cups. He keeps telling me too. <laughs> Greg, thanks very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, uh, for everyone watching out there, there's another example of the great talent we can get for you at Aussie Legends events. Uh, head to our website and book yourself a function. Greg Hall, thanks very much. Thanks, Chris. And uh, Aussie Legends events, thank you. Um, get on board, guys, because uh, well, hopefully when all this stops, uh, Chris, I uh, remember you that day now, and uh, hopefully when all this stops... Um, We'll be back down there doing a gig for you, mate. Good on you, Greg. Cheers, mate.